19th, a U.S. Navy helicopter spotted an 84-foot fishing boat, the King Diamond II, out of Honolulu, cruising slowly through the international seas southeast of Acapulco, Mexico. The modern vessel looks suspicious. It was riding low in the water and appeared to be weighed down with heavy cargo. While there were no signs of fishing gear, the deck of the boat had a shipping container, similar to those carried by long-haul trucks or container ships. The United States Coast Guard was called in to investigate. A special team from the Coast Guard boarded the ship, and they were shocked by what they found on board the vessel. There were fins. Tons and tons of rotting, disembodied shark fins. The 40-foot underside of the boat was stuffed full of fins, while bundles more sat on deck and inside of the shipping container. On August 15th, the Coast Guard Cutter Chase, with a crew of 178, took custody of the fishing boat, its crew, and the decaying contraband. The U.S. Coast Guard confiscated 32 tons of shark fins from the King Diamond II. This U.S. flag cargo ship had been buying fins from other boats at sea and planned to take the load to China. The enormous load represented the killing of at least 30,000 sharks. The U.S. Coast Guard confiscated the cargo because it violated the Shark Finning Prohibitation Act of 2000, which makes it illegal for a U.S. fishing boat anywhere or a foreign ship in the U.S. territorial waters to possess the fins of any shark unless the rest of its carcass is also on board. President Clinton signed into law the Shark Finning Prohibitation Act of 2000 on December 21, 2000. The law should have prevented the King Diamond II from lawfully transporting its cargo of shark fins. Why shark fins? In China, shark fin soup has been a primary banquet dish of the upper classes since the Ming Dynasty. It became less popular after the 1949 Communist Revolution, but regained popularity among the wealthy classes in Hong Kong, Taiwan, and Singapore. A decade and a half ago, the market for shark fin moved back to mainland China, where a new middle class found itself able to afford this delicacy once enjoyed by it a only a privileged few. Hong Kong is the heart of the global trade for shark fins, controlling about half of the world's imports. It sends most of them on to China. Shark finning is a brutal practice. A shark is caught, pulled on board a boat, its fins are cut off, and the still living shark is tossed back overboard to drown or bleed to death. The wasteful, inhumane practice is done to satisfy a demand for shark fins, which can fetch as much as $300 per pound. The meat, on the other hand, is far less valuable, so fishermen toss it overboard to save space for more fins. The practice of shark finning is wasteful and harmful, but also worthless since shark fins have no nutritional or medical value and have very little flavor. Yet, fitting continues to the point that these animals, so vital to the ecological balance of our oceans, are about to be wiped out completely. Finning is responsible for the deaths of between 88 million to 100 million sharks every year. Because sharks are, are at the top of the food chain and have few, few predators, they reproduce and mature slowly. That means that their numbers are slow to replenish when a population is overfished. At the rate humans are going, we're set to wipe out sharks entirely 
in as little as 10 to 20 years. The United States government seized the shark fins and brought a complaint to, to forfeit the shark fins. Tai Loon Hong Marine Products did not argue that the ship was carrying shark fins, but its classification as a fishing boat. The company claimed that the punishment of giving up the shark fins was a violation of due process. The U.S. District Court ordered that the fish be given up, and the Tai Loon Hong Marine Products appealed. The court sided in favor of Tai Loon Hong Marine Products with an interpretation that cargo vessels were free to work in tandem with fishing vessels, transferring shark fins at sea to then become a legal good. This awful ruling created a loophole in the Shark Finning Prohibition Act of 2000 that basically reversed the U.S. ban on shark finning. Held in cold storage as evidence, 32 tons of shark fins were given back to the King Diamond II's owner to be sold in China. In January of 2009, the Shark Conservation Act was introduced by Representative Natalie Bordallo, a Democratic representative of Guam, in the House of Representatives. The Shark Conservation Act will strengthen the Shark Finning Prohibition Act of 2000 by closing a loophole in the law that allowed vessels to transport fins obtained illegally as long as the sharks were not finned aboard the vessel. In April of 2009, Senator John Kerry, a Democrat from Massachusetts, introduces the Shark Conservation Act in the Senate, it's on, and on December 2010, the bill was approved by both chambers by unanimous consent on the last days of the 111th Congress. On January 5, 2011, President Obama signed the Shark Conservation Act of 2010 into law. Thanks to the United States Conservation Act of 2010 and an increased global awareness about shark finning, the shark fin trade is decreasing. According to official government statistics, demand for shark fin is now down 70% in China. Traders in Hong Kong, the center of the world shark fin trade, are suffering with imports down around a third over the past few years. A celebrity campaign to persuade hotels not to serve shark fin soup and airlines not to carry the fins has also helped decrease finning and shark fin has been removed from Hong Kong government reception. This relates to the History Day topic, Rights and Responsibilities, because when President Obama signed the Shark Conservation Act, he gave the sharks rights to be protected and conserved. It is the government's responsibility to enforce this law to help protect the sharks.